is where you take the mask scratch pin out um, and then we're going to be raising the sails so we're coming up here to the front these line the um, side stays are um, loose from their trailering mode and then I'm coming up to the front where I'm going to I usually brace it with my legs and I come up here and I have this on a cotter pin it could be on a bolt and you just slide the bolt out and Artemis, you need to move because I need to get the side stays out from underneath here. So I'm going to move this to the side. Um, trying to do it with one hand is kind of fun, but you can see how I'm pulling this to the side to undo it. I'm going to have somebody else take my point of view. Not the front ones, but the back ones. So I'm going to stick this here. I'm going to take the pin that I took out earlier and align this. And then either you bolt it on or um, we modified this so that we could put a cotter pin in it. And then it's ready for raising. And then stop it. This is the raising it. Um, we just need to make sure that the back stay doesn't get caught when we're lifting it up. Um, the side stays. Um, these can be adjusted a little bit, but I like to make sure I've got plastic coating over the top of them just so that they don't get they stay in place because sometimes these get uh, twisted and then it's hard to lift it. But yeah, I make sure that these are back. Um, and yeah, those can be adjusted if they need to. But once they're adjusted, um, I keep them in the same position all the time. That is because if this gets caught or if the back stay gets caught and twisted, then that can make the, it not go all the way up. But this is where you flip it. You want to make sure it stays straight. And then the side stays will come balance it. Make sure that it's not twisted anywhere up there or up there. And um, once it's up, it's not too hard. You need to be able to attach the four stay. If you can go up closer to the four stay, you can see which, which place it goes in. You take out the first little bolt. You want to describe the Artemis? Um, yeah, it has little things. <laughs> uh, you can take it out of, there's this little thing in, in the side that has a little hole, and then you can place the forwardmost one on the pulpit. Yes. It is a bit tangled. Okay, there we go. And then just goes back through the hole, through that all the way. And then you thread it through again all the way, and then it's stable. Okay, now we're going to tighten the four stay. Um, I like to use these vice grips, and we have cotter pins on these. These ones are really rusty, probably need to be replaced. And then I just, there is a flat part right here on the four stay itself that helps keep it flat because you don't want to twist one of these without twisting the other one. So this keeps it, this cable straight when you twist this to make it tight. And it goes left to go tighter, right? 
I'm doing it counterclockwise. Yeah, so I'm twisting the whole, uh, I can't remember the name for it um, right now, but you're twisting this, this thing <laughs> counterclockwise to tighten it. And you can see that it's becoming more tight because these are uh, becoming longer. So, and I tighten it until there's a nice, good, decent hold. Sage, that's, that's, can you stop it? Um, and as it gets harder to turn, I will sometimes turn this separately. But I'm still, I'm not twisting it. Um, I want to make sure that there's a good amount of tension on there. The side stay tension isn't too tight, but you want it to be able to have kind of even tension on all the stays. You also don't want to thread it too tight. That's, that's pretty good. So then I will take this off and you just want to make sure that these holes are still aligned. So if they're sideways, then you can't put the, the pins back in. Sometimes there's round pins in here. I like these ones that are like safety pins, these cotter pins. That's how you attach the four stay. And then the jib is attached to this um, D-ring. But pause that for now and we'll show you how to put this. I made this sail cover for the boom. It's not professional at all whatsoever. But um, this is, I'm just resting this on top of the mast crutch. And then I'm taking, um, this is the, we leave the sail on top of the, the boom, the main sail just, I, if, if you don't have the main sail on the boom already, I, I'm sure you could probably slide it on, but I haven't, this has always been on since I've ever had it. So anyway, um, but this gets attached. Again, we've got another little, this one's an O-ring. Um, and this little pivot thing comes out. Then I'm gonna attach this through here and put this pivot pin back. I don't know if that's the official name or not. And then I don't drop it on the water, that's bad. Anyway, you just slide this back through it and then you can cleat that up and it holds it steady. Um, and then I'm gonna go attach the front of the boom. So this I usually like to, again, you can hold it with your legs. Actually, that is a little tight. Couldn't you loosen the cleat? Here. Okay, yeah, I almost you know what I'm talking about. It's a little too tight on there, and I'm like, oh, that's a little, anyway. It's like that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now back to here. Um, and again, I know that this is where uh, the mast gets, or the mainsail gets threaded through this. It actually, oh, I'm just realizing we might actually honestly have to rethread this because ours is kind of coming out. This shouldn't be coming out like this. It should fit in the channel just like the channel gets fit in this way. Anyway, regardless, I have another pin through the bottom of the gooseneck that we fitted instead of the bolt on the end. We've got a, a modified um, pin and I stick that the gooseneck part and then I clip this back down um, then you want to attach the Anyway, this is not super professional, but whatever. I have this on an even cooler rigging. Um, this just pops out. So I modified this. This I got off of Amazon. I don't remember the name of it. Maybe I'll link it. I don't know. I'm not a professional YouTuber, so I don't do fancy stuff like that usually. Anyway, and then that's clicked onto the bottom of here. This is adjusted by another pulley up here. 
This adjusts um, the bottom of the mainsail um, when you are um, going. Honestly, I actually don't use it that much. Boom vang is what it's called. So yeah, this is the boom vang, and you can look up what when to trim the boom vang for what. Anyway, but that's how you attach it. I usually for the halyards, that's the ropes that raise the sails. I um, tighten them up during trailering so they're not looping all around and whipping in the wind. Um, and I'm going to show you at least how to start to put this on. I won't put it up until we're done. But the difference between how you can tell which one's the halyard for the jib and which one's the halyard for the main is to see where this is. You can look up at the top of the mast and the one that is leading towards the track um, to raise the mainsail <clears throat> is the mainsail halyard track. And so I would put this. This is the D-ring on top of the mainsail. I have all sorts of different D-rings. I can't tell you how many we've dropped in the water. Anyway, so this is a bowlin knot. Again, I have it untied, or like this bowlin knot has probably been here the entire length of the life of the rope. Um, and I would put this, I'm not gonna actually raise it yet, but you put the start by putting this in the channel and threading it up the channel. This is all I'm gonna put it in here on land. Um, and then I'm just going to cleat this off again. Um, and generally, when I'm once I cleat something, I loop it and do that. But that's I'll do that later. Okay, that's how you start the main uh, and attach it. So taking the mainsail cover off, I want to getting ready to raise the main. It needs to be going upwind, directly upwind, to go, um, to be able to raise it. Um, you can also, um, leave it on the mast, or the boom, the mainsail on the boom with bungees. And can you actually pull that? I can try it. Perfect. Oh, Sage, can you get the last one? got bungees securing it as well, which is what I did before I had a mainsail cover. Right. You want to make sure, usually when this is put down, um, it is every other side. I don't have a lazy jack. And you just want to make sure that it's not twisted around the bottom of it. Going to be raising. Pulling. You might want to come on this side. So as I am, I'm feeding this. So this is already in the channel. You feed it into the channel. You need to feed in the channel, and then I'm pulling the ha the halyard up while I'm feeding into the channel. And the reason you need to be going into the wind so that this doesn't catch on either side. It needs to blow directly back. So. We've got telltales. These are actually just pieces of yarn. They're attached to the side stays to help us tell which way is direct upwind and not. So Sage, can you turn a little bit more um, to the right? Starboard. This isn't too much wind, so the higher up it gets, so yeah, it's still a little bit. Turn to the right a little bit more. Turn to the right. Really? Yeah. 
because it's going out to the right. It oh, needs to be going okay, straight okay. back. And then give it as much pull as possible. And then cleat it off. I'm not gonna go into how to cleat specifically. If you flip it, yeah, anyway. There's lots of videos on how to cleat. But I loop the sail or the halyard line up like this and then pull it behind here and that keeps it nice and secure. Um, and that way, yeah, I, I want to really tighten this when, um, when it is going I can't remember if it's down or not. Can you the motor? Um, not yet. Um, I'm going to raise the jib. So can you kind of follow me up here? I did my best. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. The lifelines. Yeah, we have two things that are important here. The phone and <laughs> me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the more important thing is you. Yes. What? No, the phone's more important. A jelly. A yolk jelly. Okay, so um, you're secure. Hold uh, on to the mast. Yeah, it is a big egg yolk. Um, which one is the jib? Which one is the Genoa? Pretty sure this is. I'm pretty sure the Genoa is on top. Is it recording? Yep, it's on. Okay. All right, so the jib is folded accordion style. Um, and I'm going to put the front of it blue. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's blue. Um, and I'm going to stick that right up in front. I usually leave my D-ring on. I'm just talking to the video. So I'm going to cleat these. You just pull them out and you hank them on. They all are on the same side. And that's how you get them onto the forestay. But first, I'm going to undo, unfurl the rest of my jib and stick it in the jib cars. Each of these, these are the jib line or jib sheets. I'm going to take one side, and if it was the Genoa, I would take the sheets and I would pull them around the outside of those. But it's not the jib sheets, so I have my jib blocks down here. I'm just going to it through the block and then and then I will you want to see which way the winch is, is turning it only turns one direction and that's where you want to loop it so I'm going to loop that I'm not going to clean it off yet but that's how you clean it off so that's one side I'm going to take the other jib sheet Of a rug burn, a rope burn, and you're gonna have to scoot back a little bit. You take the other end of this line, thread 
that through that jib block and also down again thread it if you're gonna have know you're gonna have lots of wind you want to the more you wrap it around the more um power you you're giving yourself anyway that's how you do how you get it ready. I'm gonna take Going to move. back out just a little bit. Yeah, okay. Because be hold hold on to this. This is the jib halyard. And again you can look up to the front and you can see the top of the halyard is in front of the mast. Where it attaches that so you know it's the jib halyard. So I'm gonna take the end. So this end is a knot. It's a solid knot you don't want that, you don't want this to get all the way to the top because then you have to rethread it, which would be a pain in the butt. So don't do it because you can only do it with the mask down. Anyway, the other end is a bowline knot with another D ring on top. And then I'm gonna undo this D ring and put it at the top. Top of the jib. Sails are very slippery, so be super careful. So you undo the D ring. Undoing it. No, I just don't like say you're just talking to me. <laughs> okay, so that once that is on, then the jib is ready to be raised. And okay, if you could go back and sit in the cockpit now. Okay. And I will. Hey, we're healing. Kind of. Almost right on here. And sit down. Okay. So again, I'm going to be pulling. I want this line to be out, so it's pulling through the cleat. It's much easier to raise. direction we're going to go and since we're going into the wind already I'm actually let's take this out here nice crutch yeah well we can't go straight we have to go either 45 to either the right or left of the wind so we're going to go 45 degrees this way because land is right there so I'm while I still have motor power because I don't want to get in irons I want to turn until the telltales are about 45 degrees Wind. I want to pull it in a decent amount. And yeah, and those are the sails up. Oh, these are Okay. Do you stop it? Okay, and this is us detaching the forest day. Just like last time, take off this ring.
under that other lifeline, walk it to the front. Yeah. Okay, so um, Sage, can you give me some bungees? So you want to not, this is the force day, I'm making it go backwards. And to trailer these wires, you want to, you don't want to make any of these kinks permanent. So you kind of want to just coil it the way that it wants to coil. And then I usually bungee it up. The whole pirate thing makes more sense. So yeah, I like to flip it around so the bungee is kind of protecting. I'll see if I can can you come around the other side so we can see that a little bit better? So the back seat is a little bit trickier just because it is closed off on both ends. But you also kind of want to loop it. And mine's a really pink. two more bungees for the side stays. So um, you want to make sure the side stays are going forward and I'll literally just, you do have to untangle them a little bit, but then I just pull them each. walking around in the trailer. So I pull it like this and twist it. And then you got the mast crutch in? Yeah. So yeah, that stabilizes the mast for trailering. Um, that's locked in there. That's locked in there. And then it's ready to, to trailer. <laughs> 